Hi everyone! In this two-part tutorial I wanted to show you how to make this scene. Um, in part one uh, we will be making um, fire in Pyro and Cinema 4D and in part two we will be looking into how to set up materials, render um, particles, um, put nice bokeh in there. Um, Pyro is new for me, so I'm sorry for all my uh and mm uh, when I recorded the tutorials, so bear with me. First, let's start with setting up our scene. Um, so this rose came from Sketchfab. Um, kudos to this person for sharing such a beautiful model. And the steam came from Turbosquid, from the model I bought earlier. But if you don't have access to those models, um, take a look at the um, uh, library, which comes with Cinema 4D. You can just start typing rows. And um, here you can find a variety of different flowers. For example, you can use something like this, or something like, you, you know, you can pick whatever you want. Something like this. Um, this is obviously too much um, geometry. Uh, even if you go with something like this model, I would uh, remove um, all that noise and just uh, select only this part, let's say, at subdivisions and stuff. Um, but um, it really will affect the look of your fire. Um, so scale is important. Um, so let's say uh, you picked your model and uh, what's important for uh, Pyro is, again, scale of your scene. Um, for some reason it's not very realistic. I try to play with a smaller scene and um, it's just not the same. I had really hard time uh, making it look right. So right now, um, if you take a look, this cube is 200 centimeters, so two meters, and that's the size of my rose. So um, you kind of have to ignore physics a little bit and just make your object approximately this size, uh, from 100 centimeters to 200 centimeters, um, and that will allow you to get better results. Um, let's add our uh, fire. Uh, in order to do so, uh, we need to click, right click on the object and go to simulation tags and click pyrimeter. Um, as you can see, it created a uh, pyro tag, but also pyro output. And if we click play, there is fire now is seen. Uh, my computer is not the fastest, so bear with me. Um, as you can see right now, it's like so puffy and cloudy and that is happening because uh, thickness is 10 centimeters. So it creates this 10 centimeter radius and generates uh, smoke and fire from it. So I don't need 10 centimeters. I'm going to change it to 0.5 and we'll see how it looks. This is much better. Um, and if we uh, take a look at the settings itself, we have density, color, temperature, fuel, velocity, noise uh, in our uh, pyro emitter tag. Density is smoke, the gray part. Temperature is your fire. I actually don't need density for my scene. I'm only going to work with temperature, so only with fire. Let's see how it looks. Cool. Um, let's add uh, some resolution to our fire. Right now it's very liveress um, and uh, it's lacking details. S in order to change it, we need to change our voxel size. Imagine that voxels, they're like pixels, so all um, our space here is divided on voxels um, and right now those voxels are large. Um, so if you change voxel size, uh, you add details to your um, simulation. So we we'll go to Pyro Output and uh, go to Pyro Scene and Pyro. Sometimes it collapses and you're like, where is it? It's right here. Just need to 
uncollapse it. Uh, so here it is, voxel size 5. If you change it to a smaller size, you will see that um, your simulation start having all the details and beautiful, beautiful noise. Um, one thing I don't like is uh, you see this glitch of like repetition. Um, this is happening because uh, our simulation does not have enough quality. It can be fixed by adding substeps. So you're doing like two, click play. And as you can see, that repetition is gone because quality of our simulation now is better. It just simulates more steps um, per second, um, but it ob obviously will add um, time uh, for your computer to process. Um, so uh, let's say I want to see how it looks uh, in a viewer. Right now, if I click on play, nothing is happening. And it's because we need to do a couple things before that. Uh, first, we want to create material and pyro volume material and add it to our pyro output. And here you go. Immediately, uh, we have some pretty cool result. Um, I temporarily will remove substep so my simulations run faster. Um, and um, I'm going to adjust noise on my rows. Right now, there's too much fire going on. I want only areas of my rows to be on fire. And uh, that is controlled by noise. Um, so um, I'm going to change my scale to 200. And I'm going to change brightness to, let's say, uh, minus 35. So um, that means there will be less area which are burning. Let's see. So uh, 35 probably was a little too dark. So maybe minus 20. And um, to add contrast a little bit. Let's see how it looks. Cool, I like it better. And um, I also want to add a little bit more fuel, uh, not fuel, a little bit more temperature. So I'm going to uh, go to my um, emitter and change it to, let's say, 6000 and 2000 and run it again. Uh, I just want fire to be a little bit more intense. Let's take a look. This looks good. Let's take a look how it looks with the um, substeps because it, it will look a little different. Uh, let's check. You see how adding um, substeps uh, changed the look of our render? Um, before uh, it was just like straight wisps and now we have all this nice render. Um, also, I wanted to show you that your simulation will will depend a lot on this on those settings, time and scale. So um, let's grab a screen grab, and um, I'm going to change my uh, setting to 50. So m my scene is now smaller. I want uh, my fire to be just a little longer, and that um, will do the trick. compare. So this is 100 and this is 50. Time will affect your scene too. So um, this is opposite. Like if I uh, change my time to 0.5, my um, um, intensity of how far my fire goes um, will be less. So um, this is with uh, regular time, this is with a half time. So um, whatever, um, whatever is the effect you 
looking for and plus obviously uh, speed of animation um, but that's how you can uh, control the look of your fire uh, I think I'm pretty happy with that let's um, cache the scene now so we can uh, work with it easily I'm going to click on cache and uh, click cache scene yes okay um, as you can see um, it stopped caching um, it stopped showing in my um, screen but it's there <laughs> as you can see um, and uh, it looks like this I think it's pretty cool let's try um, to slow down our animation it will change the look of it um, but let's see how it looks we go to pyrocene and time scale even less let's do 0.25 and um, cache scene let's take a look here here is the previous render see how fast a uh, flame uh, is being animated and this is new render much slower flame not much half um, I like it but um, let's play a little bit more I think uh, fire is now too intense so I'm going to bring intensity back down uh, maybe to change the contrast and noise a little bit so it, there's less rose on fire and also I want um, my animation to start with um, a rose already being on fire so let's do that um, I'm going to go to my noise setting and uh, I'm going to change brightness to maybe uh, minus 27 and um, change my intensity of the fire and I'm going to I'm going to go um, in the middle of my simulation where fire is already pretty uh, large and uh, I'll go to Pyra scene set initial state and um, let's cache it again okay so um, this is my final result uh, as you can see uh, my uh, fire starts um, with the rose already burning in the beginning um, and I'm happy with the quality of fire and uh, let's jump into the next tutorial and uh, let's uh, add materials to the rows and uh, let's set the camera and some ember.